Hello again, Leslie. My employer, the Master, has another very dangerous mission for you to accomplish. The Master recently discovered that my Romanian ancestor, Prince Vlad Tepes, who lived in the 1400s, is still alive. Still alive due to some marvelous relic he found during his lifetime. Prince Vlad is much better known as Count Dracula. I am Countess Dracula, his direct descendant. Use going on a 13-day Talk Danube riverboat cruise as your cover while you're searching for the relic. Your mission is to search all over Eastern Europe for Count Dracula's relic. First, find the object, then buy it or steal it and bring it back to me. Search throughout Romania, Bulgaria, Serbia, Croatia, and Hungary. As always, your travel expenses are fully covered. Get out of that shabby cabin you're in now. And oh, oh boy, here we go, about to morph into my other body. Book the best suite on the boat. Treat yourself and Janice to every luxury you desire. Money is no object for the master. Hi, back again. However, failure is not an option. He wants to add this relic to his collection. Failure to bring the object back to me, and you will discover if I've inherited my ancestor's power to fight and destroy people. <laughs> I still have to keep pinching myself to verify that I am standing in Bucharest, Romania on my quest to find Count Dracula and the relic that is keeping him alive. Looking at the world's second largest building, the Romanian Parliament, on this Bright and soon to be sunny Tuesday, we are commencing a tour of the city of Bucharest, Romania. Here's another view of the Parliament building. It's in addition being the second largest. It's also the second heaviest and the second most expensive building to ever be built. Built in 1989. Most of Romania is Orth Romanian Orthodox. And this is the headquarters, our head of that church, like the Vatican. Greece, 15,000 churches throughout the country. Uh, so this is the Count Dracula's castle, the Vlad Sepesh castle in Bucharest. Now we will take a tour of Prince Vlad Tepe's Dracula's summer palace, the official court of Romania for a long time. This is where Prince Vlad Dracula's throne was located when he was here in the 1400s. All of these walls would have been covered with tapestries and oil lamps. This is a typical 40s, 50s, post-World War II Soviet building. These are very not earthquake safe. If there's an earthquake, this is coming down. This is the Jewish Museum and an old synagogue in Bucharest. And this is the inside of the synagogue museum. The power is out in this district, so everything is dark in here. This beautiful three-story high synagogue. Most unusual. This is the Arch de Triomphe, the same name as the one in Paris, built in 1929 to commemorate the uh, Romanians killed in the First World War. They fought on the French side in French architecture style. 
Standing on Revolutionary Square, this is the Communist building, and this is where Chinescu would speak every year. The square was filled with people who had to be here. This is the old Royal Palace and now the National Art Museum. Time for lunch at a traditional Romanian restaurant. Berry. Time to uh, get ready for my cover story of being a tourist on the Tauk Riverboat cruising. The first night is uh, on a Tauk tour is always a welcome dinner. Wednesday morning finds us in the town of Drom, Romania. Drom is famous for exactly one thing, and it's not for the major tourist trap that sits at the foot of this famous location. Now we move towards Dracula's castle. I have 15 silver crosses around my neck and five wreaths of garlic around my shoulders as I go towards this castle. And this is Dracula's castle where Prince Vlad Tepes III Dracula lived. This is a war castle, which means they used to fight the Turks out of this castle, never captured. It's cold up here and the leaves are starting to turn. Now it's time for lunch at the Papu Regini, the Queen's Hotel. Thursday is cold and bleak, and we are in Romania's largest port city, Constanta. Constanta is famous for a well-preserved Roman floor that used to connect the town to the port. This is the Constanta Casino, the symbol of Constanta that's on all the postcards. This casino was only used by Communist Party members and is now in a state of disrepair. Janice touching the Black Sea. How warm is the water, Janice? It's very warm. It's Lunch at a winery. brings us on the way to Kalafat, but first a stop at Skornichest. And this is the home that Nikolai Ceausescu, the president, lived, was born in. And this was the house he built for himself and his wife after he became the president of Romania.
with uh, fire. 118 passengers, 39 crew, 1,500 tons, goes about 10 knots. River boats come in lots of sizes, ranging from five passenger barges to 180 passenger long, thin, cigar like shaped ships. River boats are best thought of as floating hotels that take you from one small town on a European river to another. The reason that there are no river boats higher than three decks are the numerous low bridges spanning the rivers of Europe. Everything that can be lowered is lowered as you approach the bridge. This is the two-deck lobby of the riverboat. Not really a wow factor at all. Up in the front of the boat, there's always a good-sized lounge where the lectures and crew shows and other sorts of entertainment takes place with enough seats for everyone to attend the show at the same time. And I wish this trip will be a very nice trip for you with a lot of nice moments on board, also in your excursions. Our ship is a nice ship, we can say last generation, high tech, but he don't sailing totally alone on this nice river. And then we have somebody you might hear already. This is the entire crew. That's me. Yeah. 30 people. Food is about the choices you have while you eat. Breakfast and lunch are buffets. The food is excellent. But the choices are limited. A vegetarian, a chicken or meat, and well, a fish, in this case herring and a dried smoked fish, and vegetables. Saturday morning and we are on the Danube River looking at some Romanian town as we cruise by it. The air is smoky and cold on this clear day. River boats need to be narrow so that they can go through the locks that connect all the rivers of Europe. The highlight of a cruise through the Eastern Europe Danube section is going through Irons Gate, part of the Carpathian Mountains that the Danube this is the narrowest point on the Danube River at Irons Gate. This is the spot where Trajan built a bridge from Serbia to Romania to conquer Dacia in about 100 AD. This is a statue of the King of the Dacians. Carved about uh, 10 years ago. And here is a castle, an ancient castle on the Danube River. Sunday morning, and we are off to the zoo, nope, to the Belgrade fortress. This is the main gate to the Turkish fortress with a flag of Serbia above it. In this moat there are weapons from the Second World War. Belgrade is on the Sava River which is coming into the Danube right here. This is the Serbian Orthodox Church, the largest in Serbia, third largest in Eastern Europe. 
This church has been under construction for 75 years, and it might take another 75 before they get enough money to build it. Donations are accepted. Monday morning, and we're on our way to Novi Sad, looking at the Danube River. I have been informed by the master that the relic can be found in Novi Sad, so I will keep my eyes open for it. What is there to do aboard a riverboat? You can go shopping in the very small stores. One can play chess on the upper deck. Here's the right. Or borrow a bike to ride alongside the ship. Do a workout in the very tiny gym. In summary, there's very little to do aboard a river boat. Docking in Novi Sad, Serbia. With tall Stalinistic era apartment blocks. Nova Sad is most famous for its Baroque German Austro Hungarian style buildings, all built in the 1800s. A guide. These balloons mark the start of a pedestrian street with lots and lots of restaurants and shops. I feel strangely drawn to these table of books. Yes, hidden among the books for Che Guevara and Stephen King was the relic. It turns out to be a white leather-bound book. This is the main square of Novi Sad, the Square of Liberty. There are two major features on this square. This largest church in Novi Sad, a Hungarian Catholic Church, and this is the other major attraction of the square. And this is the City Hall of Novi Sad. This is the uh, main synagogue of Novi Sad now being used for concerts since the Jewish population was either killed by the Nazi Hungarian Nazis in the early 40s, deported by the Serbian Nazis in the later 44, or moved to Israel at the end of the war.
another bright but very cold Tuesday morning with snow on the upper deck. We approach the Stalingrad of Croatia, Vukovar. There are three other river boats already docked, so we will be crossing through three boats to get ashore. The entire town was leveled, or 95% of it was leveled in the 1990s by Serbian bombs and artillery. This is the war memorial, and that chessboard on the flag, it comes from the fact that uh, the king of Croatia won the freedom of the country way back when in a chess game, so they commemorate it even till today. But in Vukovar, yes, so we have like, in some schools here in Vukovar, we have two shifts for students, for pupils. Uh, the first shift is maybe the Serbian shift, so only Serbian people, Serbian students go to, to the first shift, and then we have the second shift for the Croatian students. So that's the problem here, and still an issue. This is the main street of Vukovar. Throughout the city of Kokovar, Vukovar, are destroyed buildings that have not been restored and may never be restored. They're going to be kept to show the damage that was done during the war. Here's another destroyed building near restored, rebuilt buildings. This is a green market or a farmer's market. This shell-damaged water tower is the symbol of Vukovar and will never be repaired. As we pull away from Vukovar, next stop, Hungary in the land of Paprika. Sunrise in Budapest, looking at the parliament across the Danube. There's the famous Hungarian bathhouse on this cool Friday morning, Thursday morning. With one final look at the Danube, it is time to head ashore in Budapest to explore this major capital city of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And now we go into Budapest Farmer's Market to buy paprika and other gifts for friends. This is the ultimate tourist trap farmer's market, like Pike Place Market, where people actually shop, the locals. This is where we bought the red peppers at. Paprika. I now walk along the pedestrian mall that goes from the farmer's market to our hotel, Le Meridian. Very near our hotel is Liberty Square. This building is one of the ministry buildings built by the Austro-Hungarian Empire right at the turn of the century in the 1900s. And this monument, surrounded by fencing, is the Soviet liberation statue to commemorate liberating the Hungarians from themselves in 1945 and the police will have to protect this statue periodically from people trying to tear it down. On one side of Liberty Square is the American Embassy, surrounded by even higher gates. And immediately to the left of the American Embassy is another building that you can buy because it belonged to some insurance company and is the whole building is for sale. This could be yours, right opposite the American Embassy. And here is Laszlo Klein standing next to his friend Ronald Reagan. And in the distance is the Parliament Building. And with the riverboat slowly heading up the Danube towards Vienna, 
it's probably time to conclude our 14-day jock talk tour journey from Bucharest to Budapest. This is the relic that the Master sought, the secret of Dracula's power of eternal life. The person who sold me this book said that there is a curse upon it. If you are a hero, then this book brings unlimited wealth. But on the other hand, if you are not a hero, this book brings the curse of unlimited life in horror. Another successful mission, Leslie. Expect more work from the master in the future.